Ladies and gentlemen, the best two and three team in college football resides in Tallahassee. Welcome to Florida State Seminoles Live, the 76th edition. I am Jason Parker from NBC6 in Miami. To my right, this yeah. way right there, is Logan Robinson from Noel Game Day. Logan, how are you doing in the 850? I'm having a beautiful evening. You guys killed the instant reaction. You guys took it down for me while I was uh, recovering. Uh, well, well, but I'm enjoying. Not, I'm enjoying my day. Let's not you guys. Let's give James Coleman all the credit because because uh, let's just say that the Wi-Fi on 75 in the Florida Turnpike doesn't exist. <laughs> yeah. So, of course, we're through the beautiful cities of Wildwood and Bushnell and everywhere else, the internet sucks. So it wasn't yeah. going too well, was it for you? That's, that's all right, though. There was a good first two minutes that you had, and you know, you hit the nail on the head. Uh, you were, uh, you know, and that wasn't working so well. Wow, wow, really? We're gonna go there. <laughs> I, mean, I mean, it wasn't the first time I hit the nail on the head, considering the fact that only one of the two of us had the stones to pick Florida State. In fact, I think you picked Florida State to get killed. No, 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 no. I only said a field goal. No, 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 don't pull Mark Rogers and inter interrupt me here on this one. Oh, <laughs> me interrupt you. No, pull, no, pull. I believe you said Florida State would get killed. I said Florida State would win by a touchdown. No. Nope, didn't say killed. I'm pretty sure I said by a field goal, North Carolina wins. No, you said it was going to be more than a field goal. You, you predicted I think more. it was 37-34. I think I said 37-34 on this show. On my podcast, I said 34-31, North That's Carolina. Right. That's what happened in 2016. But more importantly, all that matters is that Florida State got a win over a top five team, taking out the top five North Carolina Tar Heels, 31-28 on Saturday after a huge first half, a second half that kept both of us on the edge of our seats. I know you were up in the Champions Club. I was down with the real people in the real fan section. Yeah. And we were both sitting there. But, but I can tell you, you were on the edge of your seat. By the way, shout out, shout out, let's give a shout out to Logan's father real quick for calling – the Joshua Kendo interception. I saw your tweet there. That was incredible. That, that was, was incredible. incredible. One of the freakiest things ever. Curveball. Mark may be showing up later. Mark Mark has some things going on in Connecticut. He may he may join us. Mm. But right now you got to deal with me leading. But let's let's get back to this game for a second. Yes. Honest, honest to God, first thoughts when Florida State punted the ball up 31-28 with two and a half minutes to go. I'll be honest. I looked at my uncle and father and both said. We're about to lose this effing game. I literally said those words right there. We're about to lose this effing game because you saw it going. But, but let, let's go good and bad. So, Logan, give me your, your good first impressions on Saturday's game. I think there's a lot of a lot of good things. Um, and you got to take a lot of positives. Florida State pulls off an upset against a top five ranked team in the country. Uh, was supposed to be lighting it up. Sam Howell was supposed to be lighting up. He was going to be have his Heisman game. He was going to have highlight tapes to show to the NFL scouts. That wasn't the case. Florida State defensive line showed up, and that's something we've given them a hard time on on here. Most certainly is, you know, veterans have not been showing up. Marvin Wilson, where has he been? Janaris Robinson, where we at Durden. Guys showed effort and definitely on that front line. You got to tip your hat off to them because they showed uh, a lot of a uh, step forward mentally and the way they were playing. I thought Durden had a good game until he got out, um, which, I mean, I what are you gonna do? I mean, the dude's six five. You're tackling a six one quarterback. At some point, you want him to crawl and get after his ankles. Give me a break. But it's football, and everybody gets targeting penalties. It is what it is. Luckily, he gets to play. He'll be back early in this game this week weekend against Louisville. So defensive line, boom. Ladamian Webb is your starting running back. We got that figured out. Shouldn't be no more debate about it. I'm sure, you can throw in packages with Corbin in there too. But Webb is just too hard to tackle, and he showed actually a burst of speed, which we haven't seen all season. Man, I didn't think he was that fast off of starting the few games, uh, but he's got a burst with them. He works really well with Jordan Travis at quarterback. They were, they were a great combo and I really enjoy watching him play, but he is most certainly starting running back going forward in my mind. And then uh, I look around and I look at uh, Asante Samuel Jr. who had a solid game. I don't know what uh, Mac Brown was doing going after him. Really bad idea. I mean, I, I don't understand it. I don't know if Sam Howell was doing that, but obviously they were, they were able, which we'll talk about, they were able to find someone to pick on for the rest of the game. But um, Asante Samuel Jr. has a solid game. But there's tons of guys on defense um, that that showed out. Then offensively, we look at Jordan Travis, man. Uh, you know, two back-to-back -back games where you're facing a number five team in the country. 
Uh, he kept it within two possessions in, at Notre Dame for the majority of the game. And then now he comes in here in Doak Campbell Stadium and has a solid game and does what he needs to do. And he makes plays. And I mean, yeah. it's great. It's great to see Jordan Travis uh, excelling right now under whatever Norvell and Dillingham are calling, you know, this offense right now. And let's be, let's be realistic and, and let's be honest here because it's because one thing we're at least honest between the two of us here with Mark Rogers TV, the voice of college football. Jordan Travis had a heck of a first half. You know, he went eight, it, the total stats for the game were not that great. Eight for 19, under 200 yards passing. He did have two rushing touchdowns, including on the first offensive play after a block punt, which, by the way, I didn't even realize that we now lead the nation in block kicks right now. Mm-hmm. Five block kicks on the season. So let, let, let's give special teams some credit there on that one. But Jordan Travis, let's go first half. Let's talk about the first half for a second. Florida State came out on fire in that first half. Florida State both on offense, Jordan Travis – Came out on fire in the first half. The running game looked like it showed up. Uh, Keyshawn Helton had made some great catches in the first half. And the defense, like you said, you you, know, you hit the nail on the head. The defense played outstanding in the first half. Mm-hmm. Well, where did that come from? Was that from, from having a good showing against Notre Dame? Or was that finally just we're sick and tired of getting beat down? Where do you think that that first half performance came from? I think it was finding belief in that Notre Dame game. I think I said on here, at least the podcast that we do at Noel Game Day, but I said, you know, I think it shocked a lot of guys, not only just the offense and how they were able to perform and compete with a really good Notre Dame team, but it it showed the veterans overall on that team that like, damn, you know, Norvell's putting me in places to make plays. I just got to do it. And it showed defensively guys were in the first half were making plays or putting, putting themselves in the right position. So, I mean, you got rookies in there like Lundy and Steven Dix that still got to learn and and look at film, but I love that they're in there as freshmen facing number five team in the country. The future is so bright for both of them. Let them get playing time right now because we've already seen guys that have been in there for three years, four years, almost haven't been, it's been, uh, disgusting to watch. Um, let the true freshmen go in there. And I think they're all believing in, in Norvell. And most certainly once you beat a team that's ranked like that in your house, you get to see Norvell break the rock inside that locker room, man. They're going to bleed. They're going to bleed and sweat for him. And it's just something Florida state hasn't seen in a long while of actually being able to compete with a team like this since the Notre Dame. I still don't get why Norvell got to break the rock. I thought that was a player that got to break the rock, but I think that's just that's just his first top five win. Yeah. No, White Mike does not get the and, and, and five games and five games. I, I got to throw that in there real quick. In yeah. five games, he was able to do that. Let's also give a shout out to Joshua Kando from Baltimore, Maryland, IMG Academy. That to me was a that that to me was a video game interception. That's the kind of video yeah. game interception you have on that one. But yeah, but just just. To see somebody like that, especially coming off the the season ending injury last year, getting hurt early in the season this year, what was going through your mind when you saw that? But to, to my mind was just this is what we've been waiting years for to see. That's the kind of play that we knew Joshua Kando, a man with his size, with his athleticism, can make. Yeah, now that's something that you know we're used to seeing of guys being in that kind of position, but it's a drop ball. You know, that's usually you're gonna have a pick six, but it's been dropped. But Kane Doe, guess got some hands on him. He played the assignment perfectly. He said in the interview after the game that man, I was just running my assignment, but I kind of know what Sam was gonna do. And he just played ahead of the game mind wise and was able to take that home. And I was running towards kind of us where we were sitting, Jason, also the champions club and got to see it firsthand. I just kind of looked at my dad. I think everybody was kind of in shock at this point. Like what, what is going on? But we've kind of seen that before though, with, you know, Boise stay, we've seen it where they were able to, you know, take leads early in games, but, you know, kind of just start let pushing the uh, gas off the brake or whatever the, taking their gas off of the car pedal, whatever it is. I'm sorry, what was that? <laughs> I know, I was trying oh, to find my analogy, but I couldn't find it. Well, another chance, do the analogy again, go ahead. Trying, they're, they've are they been taking their foot off the gas in games. So mm-hmm. it's been, it's it, it was like, all right, we can enjoy, but whenever you're up like that many points in the first half, 31 points, you're like, okay, there's no way. There's no way that, you know, Florida State just needs probably just another touchdown that will seal the deal, but. Uh, one, you know, that that's still not fully there yet, which we'll talk about. But which brings me to my next question to you, right there. So, as great as that first half was, and it was the first time Florida State had scored thirty points and a half since the opener against Boise State in the twenty nineteen season. As great as that first half was, 
that second half was was very atrocious. I think atrocious would be the nice way to put it. Florida State gets outscored 21 0 in the second half, has to hold on. For me, it was not being able to score on that first drive. You get all the way down there, you're not able to punch in the end zone, and then you miss the field goal. And, and we, we saw we saw the kicking woes again, two missed field goals in the second half, not being able to get the ball in the end zone. At what point did you and, – and, and this has to be a real concern because I'm sorry. I know we're going to piss off some North Carolina fans in here. North Carolina was not a top five team. North Carolina, I would say, was a top ten team. North Carolina got ranked top five because the Big Ten hasn't played yet and the Pac-12 hasn't played yet. That's that's the only reason why North Carolina got ranked that high. Yeah, it wasn't that impressive. And Sam Howe didn't have a good game. I mean, he was – well, I mean, the pressure from Florida State's defensive line was doing a good job. Obviously, Kando mm -hmm. and also uh, Robinson were actually able to bring some pressure, pressure off the sides, which allowed a lot of the – like uh, Marvin and Durden to get in there and cause some havoc, which worked really well. Yeah, Marvin Wilson actually showed up. Let's give Marvin Wilson credit. We've, we've, I've been critical of him the past couple of games. He did have a decent ball game, and he did show up. And that was the kind of Marvin Wilson that you need to see play. But does that second half keep concern in you going into maybe not the Louisville game, but going on to games later in the season where – if we do, if we do beat Louisville this week, and you're three and three going into the bye week, knowing you have to go three and two the second half of the season, does not be able to to win the second half or at least score in the second half concern you going into the last six games of the regular season? A little bit, but I, I'm seeing progression every week, which is which is fine with me. I'm not too not too scared about it. Obviously there's things that have got to be fixed, but I do like the mentality and I like the way this team is speaking after games that they owned up and that, that they said there was so many things they should have beat this team by three more touchdowns. And that's what Norvell is preaching. And I like the way that he's speaking in these interviews. Like it, it there was some, he even said in an interview yesterday that it really pissed him off uh, of stupid things they're putting themselves into the silly mistakes is the number one thing I'm pissed about the silly, ridiculous, immature things that, you know, even the fall starts way too many and it's hurting the Florida state's offensive drive that Florida state's offense rolls in momentum. We found that out under Norvell, this offense rolls under momentum, but fall start, same drive, another false start. It just completely ruins it. Obviously, number 55 has a bad mistake. I'm sure uh, Coach Atkins is probably still having him do stadiums as we speak. Um, but the, the, I, I thought you would have called him out because he's a Miami guy. I thought you would have been the first person to quickly, because I know you hate everything from us. <laughs> I thought you would have waited to call out Dante Lucas. No, no, no. I think he – I do like – you know what I do like is seeing – you know, now, you know, I talked about it whenever we were, what was it, previewing this game or whatever. Now people want to praise Norvell and the rest of the staff for having some discipline on the sideline. That's what I was talking about since this whole, since the offseason. Put some damn discipline on the players and look you, what's happening. Look you, what's happening. Hold on. You praised him for discipline when he was wrong. I'll give when? him. I would give, he showed emotion at the right time in this one after a personal foul penalty on North Carolina. Yeah, you look at that sideline. He does it almost to anybody. Right, but what I'm saying is you were praising him for the play against Jacksonville State when it was clearly a flop by the Jacksonville State player that Flor that the Florida State guy got called for a penalty. So so oh, let, because you, you're going to praise White Mike no matter what. Let's go. Well, I don't want him to be tapped on the helmet and say, all righty, you know what, you want to have some pudding later? That's okay. What they did for your child, right? <laughs> huh? That's what they did for you at Charles High, right? No, no. Playoffs, oh. first time ever. Did you guys beat NFC last week or not? I have no clue. They probably didn't. Or we'll probably be the last team that did it. Good God. Uh, now, you talk about Asante Samuel. Asante Samuel, and I agree with you because I said that. At the start of the game, it looked like Sam Howell was just picking on him. I don't know if it was size differential, height differential, whatever you want to do. It wasn't working. What? Uh, what talk about Asante Samuel and talk about the secondary's performance on Saturday. Sorry, there's a little Alexa thing going off right now. But the secondary, I think there's got to be a little bit of some moving around still. I do like Dotson as a quarterback two spot. Sante Samuel Jr. is going to the league. I mean, if he keeps it, keeps it up like this, but he's having a great season. But got to find who your other corner is. I know Jay and Jones wasn't playing in this game, and we've seen him played in the first half or the first part of the season a little bit. But I don't think he fits too well. Move him over on the inside a little bit. Put Dotson on his own other island. The dude led to uh the nation and in interceptions last season 
put him there. I thought he played well. He got beat on a ball. He didn't get beat, but he got uh, mossed on a ball. But the dude's – that's an NFL wide receiver. That's a future NFL wide receiver. Dotson's 10 times smaller than him. Just a really phenomenal play by the wide receiver. You can't do much about it, but he put himself in the right position. Dotson did. So I think Dotson is your cornerback too. Um, and I like seeing Travis Jay out there. He's still a young and he's going to have to get better at making some tackles, but he, I mean, I, he brings the heat, which I like. Uh, and I really like, uh, Woody. I think a lot of people aren't talking about Woody jr. Enough. Um, because I don't know, there's just so many other guys, but watching him at least on Saturday, Jason, just taking an eye at him. He's just consistent, man. He doesn't really make that many mistakes. He's in the right spots. He's making tackles. Um, and, and he, he's doing a pretty pretty good job so i do like woody being back there and i think Jaden uh lars woodby had his best game of the season although he missed out on angle i think was that on the goal line where mm -hmm. he should have picked up the running back but um other than that he brought the heat and i, I don't know this was a good performance from the the veteran yeah. and the, and the deep the secondary has been doing all this great work without handsome nazareth mm -hmm. yeah Still played down the season will we see him at all against legal or do you think they're gonna wait until after the five I don't know. Uh, maybe not. I'm, I'm still trying to contemplate if we see him at all this season. I, I don't know really what's going on. Uh, I would like to see him play some. Definitely this defense, he is a kind of like your um, your manager back there. I, I feel like he kind of makes that unit just flow a lot better with him being there. I, I would love to see him with uh, Travis J. Sign me up right now. So – where there's we talked about good, we've talked about the defense. They had their moments and whatnot. Mm -hmm. Kicking game, shout out to the cat behind Logan. I know there's another one now. Another animal. Mazel tov. See, I didn't even have to say it. The fans are bringing <laughs> it out here on the play. But the kicking blow. We've talked about it. You know, you you know, you had your Ricky Aguayo time, where you were the biggest Ricky Aguayo fan on the face of God's green earth. Me? I'm total sarcasm. Why? <laughs> oh, you know, Ryan Fitzgerald. Kind of had his little woes there. Do you, are you are you a little worried about where the kicking situation is right now for Florida State? Yeah, I think there's got to be some better execution, though, most certainly. Um, it would have helped a lot in this game, too. Definitely when you're facing a team like that, you got to take as many points as you can get. Definitely when you have a lead, you got to take advantage of the easy points and you know, a disappointing and a disappointing game for Fitzgerald. But you got to hope, hopefully, whenever – they get down to practice if there's got to be some competition uh, with the walk-on because uh, he was kicking in the first game. If they got to have some kind of competition, then let it be. But um, got to be got to be better on that. Really, Florida State's kicking game hasn't been that great since early uh, Ricky Aguayo. So um, it's been struggling the last couple of seasons. Would you say the old Miss game, probably? Yeah, that's pretty pretty much it. That's what I look. At. That's what I look and see when I'm think that. Yeah, two field goals against Miami in 2015. I'll probably say Miami game was probably the last. Yeah. See, I, how do you remember all that kind of stuff? I can't do it. Yeah, he had the two, and then he had the block extra point against Michigan, which they returned for two. I think that was probably the beginning of – Yeah, I think that block kick against Georgia Tech is what began the disease. Well, that was Roberto Aguayo, but okay. Oh, well, yeah. that's. I think that's what ended up just continuing the disease, though. I think that's oh, what it, it, it went to his brother like that? Yeah, yeah. It just spelled down on him. He must have had a lot of alcohol in the champion. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Well, down there with the real folk drinking soda. So here's my uh, to you, Logan. Florida State is two and three. I jokingly called them the best two and three team in college mm -hmm. football right now. There were points after the Miami game, after the Notre Dame game, where we were all a little worried. Are you confident right now? Are you more confident right now that Florida State can become bowl eligible? And or Obviously, we've talked about how the, the rules this year are going to be different with COVID and whatnot, and, and Florida State could make a ball game at five and six. Who knows? But when I say bowl eligible, I mean six and five, having that six wins, which would normally get them to a bowl game. Are you more confident Florida State can get six wins now after this win against North Carolina? I do, and I think it. I think with what we saw on Saturday night, at least defensively, at the first half, you know, this team can put just – put it together for four quarters, man. Uh, it could be a scary team that that uh, Norvell and Fuller are putting together. I think uh, there was a lot of realization against the Notre, Notre Dame game that they were able to compete 
with uh, an elite team with very talented guys, guys that have played there in Notre Dame, veteran guys, and they were able to compete. Florida State's a fresh new team, no spring, didn't really know what the heck they're doing at quarterback. And they've been able to be coached and listen. And I think that buy-in is going to be the biggest thing. And I think it would be disappointing if Florida State doesn't get six wins. Obviously, it's hard to like really go off of things, but I go off of the attitude. And I don't I don't care how they're celebrating during, after the game. I, I want to hear what they're saying in the interviews. And what Kando and Ontario Wilson both said is, man, I got to get back to work tomorrow. There's a lot of missed things that uh, we should have been better at. There's a lot of things that we can continue to actually compete with big time uh, teams. And that, that's going to be huge moving forward. So, um, yeah. yeah. I, it, what, what was frustrating for me as a fan in being there was you look at what Florida has done the last two weeks, played competitive with Notre Dame on the road and beat North Carolina, be the top five ranked team. I get it. The Miami game is what it was. Miami kicked kicked our ass. Let's just be honest about it. Miami kicked the holy hell out of us in a game that they will probably never beat us that badly ever again. Mm-hmm. A game like North Carolina makes me want that Georgia Tech game back. Like if, if this oh, yeah. game that play against North Carolina plays against Georgia Tech, we kick the hell out of Georgia Tech. Let's just yeah. be honest about it. And then the fact that Georgia Tech has gone downhill, losing to UCF, getting the holy hell kicked out of them by Clemson, this week, which, by the way, makes me think that Clemson's going to absolutely smoke us come November first. Mm. They are just going to absolutely destroy us. And Florida State keeps trying to get me to buy tickets. That that's not going to happen for that game. My mm. my my question to you right now, and 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 a lot of people are throwing heat on James Blackman, which I don't necessarily agree with because I think James Blackman did the best with what he could as a starting quarterback. But I will ask you this question. If Jordan Travis is the starting quarterback of this team, does Florida State beat Georgia Tech? Yes. Oh yeah. Yep. And if definitely if they had if they if he was named the starter and they had weeks and weeks to repair with first team, yes, that it wouldn't have uh it wouldn't have been a close, uh, well, honestly. It wouldn't have been close. I mean, Florida State's defense still had some work to do, but you know, right now the offense is is starting to click. I don't think they would have had the best running game at where they're at now because they're still trying to find their flow in a lot of ways, but I think they would have beat them by two touchdowns. Then why was James Slack from the start? That's a great question. I don't know where Norvell and Dillingham were seen. Uh, I think practice was a big thing for them, and they saw a guy that had experience with these wide receivers that he had been connecting with for years, and that, that was probably the easy and the, probably the choice for them. And I think he was having really good practices, but when it came to games, he was kind of flip-flopping around. And I think that's – I mean, I don't know what else to say about it. It's, It was – they should have had a um, – they had to find who their future quarterback was going to be. And uh, Jordan Travis, I think, if, against Georgia Tech, it would have been it would have been two touchdown win. So give me, we're going to do this real quick. And then we're going to put the, we're going to put the ball in the North Carolina game in honor of the great Doc Emmerich, NBC's hockey anal- hockey play by play man who retired after nearly half a century. Give me uh, your three stars of the game. Give me your three stars from the game, and I'll give you mine. Three stars of the game are Asante Samuel Jr. My number two is a Damian Webb solidifying him as the true starting running back for Florida State University. And my number three is I'll probably, I think what really killed like North Carolina and I just saw them lollygagging back to the sideline with their heads down and Sam Howell just looked lost for a majority of the game. I think Kane Doe, uh, he didn't really have really crazy, crazy splash plays like, except for the pick six, but he was on his assignments. He saved a touchdown from happening. There was one play in the third quarter, late third quarter, where um, Sam Howell was rolling out. It was on our end zone, Jason, where he was rolling out to the left, and he was trying to find either the wide receiver or the tight end wide, or wide receiver in the uh, end zone. But Kendo falls on the ground, but is able to get back up and get to the running back and cover him, and then he ends up batting down the football, mm-hmm. um, which saves, saves Florida State before going into the fourth quarter, saving North Carolina. A uh, touchdown there. So uh, I think those three for me. What about yours? I'm going to give you my three stars. Um, number one, and these are in no particular order, but I'm going to say my three. I will give you, I will give it to you a Conway Samuel Jr. Mm. Out of, from down here in Broward County. I think he showed up in the big game. And we've talked about this before how he needs to shine against big time opponents. I think he had a decent game against Notre Dame. I think this was the highlight game 
against North Carolina. And I like that he was able to do to do what he was able to do. For my other two stars, I'm going to go back to the offensive side of the ball. Number one, I'm going to give it to – well, number two star, I'm going to give to Jordan Travis. Not so much for his second half because I think the second half worries me, but for his first half. Jordan Travis's first half was the best first half I've seen from a Florida State quarterback since Jameis Winston. Since Jameis Winston during that 2013 season. He managed that ball game. There were a couple drives where, you know, a couple three and outs that were a little disappointing. But for the most part, he managed that game on the offensive side of the ball like a, a quarterback who's done this for a few years and not just a couple games. So I'm going to give credit for that. Yeah. My third star has to go to Keyshawn Helm. And I think Keyshawn Helm, mm-hmm. you know, he got the first touchdown of the season against Georgia Tech, you know, and, and everyone's talked about Tamar and Terry, Tamar and Terry. Obviously, Tamar and Terry had, had knee surgery. He's going to be out for have, – have we heard anything about how long he'll be out for? Uh, nothing, but I think it's going to be sooner than later. He was jogging around on the sideline, which which was funny. He came out during early warmups with crutches, and then he tried to hide it. But this man is over here trying to jog from getting off of the field. Um, you think and I think he wants to play. I think he wants to play. You think he's back by the pit game? Uh, how know. many weeks is that? So I'll be not this week, and then we have the bye week. So three weeks, well, two and a half weeks from today. I think there's a strong chance. Okay. So Pitt, NC State, someone run there. Okay. Mm-hmm. But everyone thought, okay, who's going to step up? Who's going to step up? And there were a lot of people who thought when Tamar and Terry had surgery, there's Florida State's offensive weapon gone. Who's going to step up there? Keyshawn Helton had a hell of a ball game. Jordan mm-hmm. Trapp that one pass that Keyshawn Helton went up for, went up and got it. There was the one that, that, that I still stand by the statement. He made that catch on the sideline that got taken back. They got called back after review. I think that kid was a catch right there on that one. But I think Keyshawn Helton – made himself not just the bona fide number two when Terry comes back and is healthy, but he showed that he can be a bona fide number one over the time being. So I think I think that's why he gets my third star. But you know mm-hmm. who else, you know who I'm gonna give a special fourth star to? Who is that? Logan Robinson for always giving us the reasons why we should hit the like button. Logan, why should we hit the like button? Uh, we should hit the like button because there's sixty viewers and only 21 likes. And I think our moderator that is in here, Melissa May, I believe, is in here lighting it up for us, also telling the chat to hit the like on there. If we hit the like button, more FSU fans will come in here. More the merrier. We got to get this thing. I'm so tired of seeing like the 70s to 100s. I want to get this thing to 200 by the end of the season watching us live. There's just too many FSU fans. It's easy to watch. We've moved to Wednesdays at 6 p.m. I don't think we really said that, but we've moved to Wednesdays at 6 p.m. because I have a softball work. Thing that I have to go to on Tuesday nights, and so let's, just uh, let's just recap. Out of the four of us who do this, the youngest one, we have to adjust our schedules for you. I'm sitting here waiting to patiently eat my dinner of a salad. Oh, uh, how brutal! No, it's a good salad. Got some bacon, oh, a little eggs, a little cop, yeah. a little cop salad. Actually, it's fine. We'll hit the like button so then we can get more views. So then, like, we can get Jason some kind of sponsor for. Uh, what a grow healthy or something. You know, I, I, I ate way too unhealthy in Tallahassee this weekend. Shout, yeah. shout, shout out to Hooters, shout out to <laughs> Rose. Uh, yeah, <laughs> yeah they're, they're, they're a little unhealthy this weekend. Yeah, smash that like button though. Smash the heck out of it. It's right below. We went up only eight likes, 65 people watching, only 30 likes. Yeah. Oh, I mean, we got to smash it up. We got hopefully Mark will be in here soon. We'll see. Hopefully he will. Hopefully he makes it here before Florida State's next game. Florida State heading back on the road this week for another ACC contest, taking on the 1-4 Louisville Cardinal. Louisville mm. coming off a close loss. They lost 12-7 to last week against Notre Dame on the road. One week after Florida State lost 42-26 to Notre Dame. Now, Logan, I'm going to ask you a question, and then, and then I'm going to hear your answer, and then I'm going to give my answer. On paper, Florida State beats the number five team in the country. Mm. Louisville loses on the road, scores seven points total in the game. How in the hell is Florida State a six-point underdog? That kind of shocked me, too. I don't know if people are thinking, like, all right, Louisville's going to come out ticked off or something like that, but they probably still are. If we look back for this whole offseason, you flip – I mean – you get Jordan Travis, blah, 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 but your flippant commitments, Florida State basketball versus Louisville. I mean, there's so many different things in this. Obviously, you have a, a flip from, obviously, Chubba Purdy, and then also you have a flip 
um, from Griffiths to Josh Griffiths, who committed there. I mean, Louisville, Louisville has to hate Florida State big time. There is multiple other things too, but they're pissed off. So maybe that's what they're seeing, but I don't see it that way. I saw enough on Saturday to tell me, unless unless you see a team where this is where we're going to see the big maturity. If they go and they they have that big win against North Carolina, but then come in and they're they kind of just let Louisville do their thing on them, then I will be very disappointed and I will know the maturity of this team. But if if they show up ready to play this game, play the first half but also finish it that's something norvell and the staff have been talking about finish finish the damn game you've got to finish it you can start off hot like that but you you can't let what happened to north carolina you should have beat them you should have beat them by two touchdowns um i think the argument is the game yeah, the argument from vegas is going to be oh well they held Notre Dame to 12 points versus florida state which allowed 42 points well on the other side of that we scored 26 points against Notre Dame. they scored a touchdown mm-hmm. Boom, touchdown Single touchdown. Louisville is on a four-game losing streak. Let's just be honest. They're on a four-game losing streak. But it's not like they've been out in many of the games. They lost by five to Notre Dame last week. They lost by a field goal to Louisville. And, yes, the Miami loss. They lost by 13 to Miami. They were in that game for, for much of the first half, and they started to the second half before Miami pulled away. Really, their only blowout loss was against Georgia Tech when they got blown out by 19 points. So – from, from what you've seen of Louisville, and, you know, you look at quarterback Willie Cunningham, they do have Tutu Atwell, who's a star wide receiver from down here in South Florida. What what worries you as a Florida State fan when you – let's start with what worries you about the Louisville offense right now? Uh, I would say, I mean, the thing – like I said earlier, I'm not, I'm not too really – impressed with Louisville I think we were all thinking that their coach this year was going to bring them up and you know we talked a lot about him and hyping him up but I'm, I'm not too worried about it if Florida State's defensive line shows up I'm not I'm not too mad because if I look at what North Carolina was on lockdown at least definitely for the first half with Florida State's defensive back unit I'm not too really impressed I'm not going to be too intimidated by uh, the DBs over there or the uh, wide receivers at Louisville Lee, Lee Cunningham, the quarterback, has completed 62% of his passes. He's thrown for over 1,100 yards, 10 touchdowns, five interceptions. Uh, mm-hmm. When the, the running game for the Cardinal, their leading rusher is uh, Javian Hawkins, who currently has 519 yards on 100 carries and has three touchdowns. He has the same number of touchdowns as Cunningham on the ground. In fact, they both combined for all six of Louisville's touchdowns on the ground. So like so their quarterback has a lot about about compares exactly the same with Sam Howe practically. Their quarterback, yeah, stats wise is kind of the same. So here's my question to you. We took we, we joked about uh, Florida State being the best two and three team in college football. Could Louisville be a one and four team that's not really a one and four team? Or do you think do you think their record do you think they're a legitimate one and four team or are they a team that's a couple plays away from being better than what their record says there? Uh, I, I mean, they competed with Notre Dame. Uh, they were able to hold Notre Dame to some points. So I, that might be maybe the thing you can talk about as much. I'm not really too – I'm not really too worried about Louisville, I'll be honest. I, I, they, they're about to probably go one and five. I, I, it was too much hype during the offseason. I don't understand really uh, – I haven't really watched a lot of Louisville either, but I just know they were able to compete very – nicely with Notre Dame, but uh, I'm not, I'm not too worried about this game. I'll be honest with you. <laughs> I think, I think, uh, I think Florida state actually sends a statement on Saturday night that they can play a game against another five team in the country and show up the next weekend um, and might decimate in Louisville. See, this is where, and before we turn things over to Mark, I'm going to tell you why you're wrong real quick. This is the kind of game that is scary because we've talked about this with, with games before where Florida State plays down to their competition. Florida State was able to play up to a fifth-ranked team in the country, and now they're facing a one and four team that could be a lot better than one and four. This team, Louisville could easily be a three and two team right now. And yeah, I get the numbers aren't sexy and whatnot, but Florida State has a tradition of playing down to their opponent. Florida State should have not lost to Georgia Tech, and we played down to our opponent. Florida State should not have gotten blown out by Miami. We played down against Miami. Florida State 
tends to want to get up when they want to get up. Can they get up for Louisville? Speaking of getting up. Yes, they will. Speaking of getting up, somebody who finally woke up from his nap, apparently, Mark Rogers TV, the voice of college football, is finally back here to join us. Mark, welcome back. Uh, <laughs> yeah, it was a good nap. <laughs> so I usually, I usually uh, am devil's advocate to uh, Jason, but I'm going to be uh, a little devil's advocate to uh, to you, Logan, right here. So uh-huh. Louisville. So yeah, I'm not sold on Louisville either. I don't. I didn't understand all the love during the off season too, because I was doing like preseason ACC predictions game by game, and I'm looking at the Louisville percentages in the off season, and I'm like, are is this crazy? Like they were in. 83% pick against Miami. Like seriously, 83% certainty that they were going to beat Miami. Uh, so there was a mm-hmm. ton of love for Louisville and I get it. Scott Satterfield did a great job that, that caused him to rise in my ACC coaches rankings as Jason um, committed to heart. He oh, oh, by those as gospel truth. Let me make sure I can, you can see the rolling of the eyes here. Nah. Go ahead, continue. So he did a great job, you know, two and 10, eight and five. Mm. But man, when they played somebody decent last year, they got rolled and they had one of the worst defenses in college football by any measurement, advanced metrics on down the line, a a bottom 10 defense in college football. And basically this is what happens when you've got a bad defense and then the, the playmakers don't make as many plays on offense for whatever reason. Well, maybe losing one of the best left tackles in the country who was a top 10 pick in the NFL draft may have something to do with it. So yeah, this is not a scary game for Florida state. I think Florida state's got the better talent. They've got the better roster. Uh, I believe in the recruiting rankings for the most part, but I think it's going to be, where's the game? Louisville. Oh, it's Louisville. Louisville. Okay. Um, I, I think that Florida state's a better, has a better roster. Uh, I think it's a bit of a toss-up. I was just going to go to the Vegas line and see where this thing stands. Louisville's a six-point favorite, and I agree. yeah, I agree with I agree with <laughs> both high. of you. I agree with both of you that with the Florida State is a better team. On paper, Florida State should not have anything to worry about. My argument why Florida State should be extra worried goes back to the first game of this season. Everything you just said is what we said on here talking about the Florida State Georgia Tech game. Every single word you just said, Mark, every single word you said, Logan, is everything we both said at the beginning of September talking about Florida State playing Georgia Tech and what happened. Well, now we've learned, though, that there is growth every week. That's the good thing about it. We're seeing the line graph go up, which we're seeing every week. Oh, Are has you the offensive you line not gone better? Has the offensive no. line under Coach Atkins? What? The offensive line has not gone better. Do not go Michael Wait, Jordan. Wait, it has stayed the same as last year. Do not it has go- stayed the same. Do not give me the Michael. Get him. Get him, chat. Do not, do not give me the Michael Jordan. The ceiling is the roof. Do not you give just, me that right just now. You broke me. You just broke me. I got to sit back here for a second, Mark. Look, the offensive line so far through the five games of the season, to me, the offensive line against North Carolina was was nowhere near better than what they were against Georgia Tech. Is it right. as atrocious as it was in 2016? No. Is it as atrocious as it was in 2017 and 2018? No. Uh, but to sit there and say that it's much better through five games, no, it's the same pathetic offensive line. It's, not there's from, not there's progression. From, not just from Dante Lucas not being able to, to to stay, you know, not get a false start penalty. It's just the fact that the offensive line, could they get better by the Duke game on December 5th? Absolutely. But right now, if you're saying, is this offensive no line? No progression at all. They've stayed no, the same. No. From the Georgia Tech game to the first five games, yes. Are you kidding? No way. Who the hell? No way. This cat's not cute. No way. Everybody thinks your cat's cute. Phil, Phil, <laughs> Phil, 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 Phil. Thank you. Thank you, Phil. There is two of them. There's another one over there. But I do. I think there has been most certainly progression. I think it's getting better. Coach Atkins has done a has done a solid job. I mean, uh, Florida State also lost linemen in that Georgia Tech game. One, two, three, what, four. A little bit. They were in and out. They were having to make changes. Uh, I, I think definitely it bodes well better with this uh, with Jordan Travis at quarterback. It's it's a little bit easier to block, but you can't tell me though there hasn't been progression. There has well, definitely been progression. First of all, we move on from you, Logan, and you being able to talk about Kyle Pickett. Kyle, if you're going to try to smack talk me, first of all, at least spell Norvell's last name correct. That's number one. 
Number two, you're probably as drunk writing this as Logan was on Saturday. Uh, I'll try to contact him and say, Logan, where are you? Oh, yeah. I'm in Florida. Yeah. yeah, five games. Took five games. Not Thank five God. Games, Taggart yeah. need, how many more did Taggart need, though, to get a top Taggart? top 20 well, I'm win? To remember, I'm top 15. I'm trying to remember. You know what's funny? Taggart was never two and three through five games. Never. Taggart beat Boston College. They were number 20. Not that they finished number twenty, so they weren't a true top twenty team. Tiger was three. They finished seven and six. Tiger was three. They weren't close to a top twenty team. I'm just saying, Tiger was three and two, and he was three and two. And you know what? He never lost to Georgia Tech. I mean, never played them, but still, he never. Yeah, never. (laughs) I think you got to give it up. I think that kind of ended that better than one and eight. Mike Norvell does not, and this is the problem. One in eight against ranked teams. Does Mike, does Mike Norvell get credit for beating North Carolina? Yes. Once again, they were not a top five team. They were, and 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 Mark Mark, I know you're thinking the same thing. They should not have been ranked top five. They were maybe a top ten team. I'll maybe give you that. I had them ranked number four, but well, I do it differently. No, they are not. They are not one of the fifteen best teams in the country. No, absolutely not. But they're they're a good team. Let's get yeah, them. They're a good team. They are a good team. Sam Howell, I think, is a good quarterback. Mike Norville is going to get all the credit in the world. Look at what they did. Look what they did. Look what they did. What happens if they lose to Louisville this week? Are, are, are people like Logan going to continue to give him a pass? Or are people going to finally admit? We're not talking about the future and the loss. Well, we're talking about what happened group, right? on Saturday. And Florida State won that game. So you're No one- spring. No spring. Went to hold the whole social injustice. Supposedly the whole team – was going after him, blah, 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 going after him. Listen, we all know why you like Mike Norvell. It's fine. I get it. I completely understand it. (laughs) Because he cusses out his players that make mistakes. That's why I like him. He's a a white guy with a Southern accent. That's why. He reminds you of me. He's probably a lot like you back in college. But my point is this. You cannot sit here and say he's this great coach for beating North Carolina and not look on the other side and say, but he was also the coach when we lost to Georgia Tech. Miami, he was not there. He was not on the sideline in Miami. That's fine. I don't attribute the Miami loss to him at all. But while you're going to sit there and say, yes, great win against North Carolina, you also have to say horrible loss against Georgia Tech. Yeah. To me, if Florida State, old- if Florida State finishes 7-4, and four, let's just say it, Florida State has a great end of the season finishes 7-4, and four, yes, I will give Mike Norvell all the credit in the world. But right now that we are still a under 500 team halfway through the season. And a win against Louisville – just puts us at 500 going into the bye week. Is that really something that we're going to sit here and praise Mike Norvell for with all the talk we had about him before the season? Uh, did you see he was playing quarterback at the first? I think we talked about this yeah, earlier. Because you were sitting we here. We talked about this earlier, and you said that Florida State would beat Georgia Tech with Jordan Travis. You, remember that? You remember you that? Loved, you loved this <laughs> before. You loved it. I did. I, I love it. And he's a great, wonderful teammate. Uh, but, yeah, Florida State. Should only have uh, Notre Dame loss, and it should the Miami loss. So the After Miami that, it should be three and two. But how but much, how much of that Natty Ice did you drink before tonight? Show? Not none. I got to take an exam after this, so I don't plan on drinking until probably I'm done with that exam. Everyone, but everyone wish Logan luck on his. What exam is it for? Uh, it's for it's my speech class. That's my speech. It should be easy. It should be fairly easy. It's like common sense stuff. I feel, that's what people are saying. So hopefully, I don't know. I feel like I have better common sense than textbook smarts. Is that, wait, is that a Ziegler course? Yep. It's uh, no, it's not Ziegler. No, it's this. Uh, it's the other guy. For, I don't know his name. Shout, shout out to Mark Ziegler. So would this be a class in which you would have to give speeches in the class? I have to give speeches. I've already given one, but you just do it online, and people give you critiques since we can't do it in class right now. Do you send them this? This. Um, I have not live said, stream every week. You just you just throw actually, would you live just stream. use this? Yeah, this is it. This is uh, you know, top level resume deal right here. I, I, I honestly should. Drop but the mic. I, I don't want to get a bad grade though because Jason's love for Willie Taggart that might ruin it. Like anybody with like the common sense uh, well, would probably well, give me a bad grade because the love for Willie Taggart after twenty one games and then after five games, five to maybe, not even a quarter makes you look smarter. Do you, do you oh. want to, no, yeah, that's true. Logan, you want me to actually show you my actual degree from Florida State? <laughs> oh, you'll get there. The ceiling is the roof, buddy. Don't worry. 
Oh man. Yeah. No, uh, I want to, I want to comment on something too. And I don't know if anybody will disagree with me on here, but probably. Uh, so a lot, there was a lot of criticism on Jordan Travis's lead blocking for whenever the Damien Webb, ha Webb had his long run, you know, it was, there was a clip on Twitter and we all saw it. If you're watching on TV and game that, Webb is off on his run, and then Ontario Wilson, who's fast as hell, is running down the field to block. And then also Jordan Travis is hauling ass down the field to block because there was only, I believe, two defenders at the time. So it could have worked out. But people are still like, Jordan Travis is stupid. What is he doing? Blah, blah. Freak. They're facing the number five team in the country. Let them have some effort. People have been complaining about this team showing effort for years. For uh, the last couple of seasons, guys aren't showing effort. They're not continuing to play. They're not finishing plays. Let the dude go down their block. Obviously, he's, uh, he's your starting quarterback. You don't want him to get hurt. But look back at Jameis Winston. He did that numerous times. Numerous times. Jordan Travis has been doing it since the beginning of the season. He's going to be okay. He just got in front of the defender. It's going to be all right. But people just keep on complaining. I mean, that, that's the fan base. So Florida State's fan base just likes to complain and complain and complain. I mean, Florida State just beat the number five team in the country. I swear I saw more tweets about negativity than positivity. It's ridiculous. Mm -hmm. I mean, this fan base just wants to go instantly to 2013. And it's mm -hmm. so – it's so just get over it. Get over it. This is a building team – but what you want to see are these guys hauling that ass down the field, man. And if you want to beat a number five team in the country, that's what you have to do. And if it's your starting quarterback doing it, I mean, let him do it, man. The 2013 season that Jameis Winston had a quarterback is not going to happen again at Florida State. It happened It happened even more yeah. with, with Joe Burrow last year at LSU. But at Florida State, it's not going to happen. Sorry, guys. But at least it's not going to happen for a long while, as long as we're doing this show here. Jordan Travis – I, I will give him credit, despite what happened in the second half here against North Carolina, has grown in each start. If he continues this path by the Clemson game, he may be able to keep it within 50. Who knows? Maybe. I think Clemson is probably going to destroy us by at least 85 points at this rate. But if he can continue on that path, I think we're going to be fine. But that's the problem. And, and Logan hit the nail on the head. Everyone looks at what we did in 2013 and thinks – Oh, it, it was so easy. It's so easy. No, it's not. That was just a great team, arguably the greatest team in college football history, that got together and just happened to win the national championship, the final BCS national championship. That team is not going to happen again at Florida State for a while. Go with what we've got right now, criticize Mike Norvell for losing to Georgia Tech, and move on. <laughs> Nah, I just had to get off, get that off my chest because I'm still getting comments. Like when we do our IG lives of, so when are we going to see Chubba Purdy? What's going on with Chubba Purdy? We're going to talk about. Wait, am I am I on drugs? Am I? Did I kill at least five of these cases and not see Jordan Travis just beat a number five team in the country? You can actually have a competitive game against Notre Dame. And, and what am I smoking? I mean, <laughs> it's just it's just a few of the fan base, and it just irritates me sometimes. I'm like, God dang, you can never just be pleased with beating a top five team in the country. I don't give a damn if they're top ten, top fifteen, blah blah blah, because all this rankings crap. They're a good team. On paper, it's top five. They man. beat a really good team. First, yeah. first of all, I think you kill five of those cases no matter what. When uh, the, yeah, I yeah. five of those cases. There's a lot more I need to put up there. So. I'm sorry. Did they talk about your Discord? I figured you know you, you haven't. That's coming soon. I'm going to say that when we get off, most certainly. I also want to shout out Luke Walker, man. He was our big North Carolina guy for the last two years on here. Oh, Luke's in here. Luke, uh, Luke, Luke, Luke was talking about how they were going to blow us out. How, how we had no chance. Greatest two running backs in the history of college. I wore I wore blue for him. I wore this beautiful blue for him. I wore black. To sit Shiva for his, his yeah. I'll find some Luke Walker talk here. Awesome, because Luke was talk. Luke came hard in the paint with his talk. He came as hard in the paint as Bobby did. You move. That tweet message. <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Melissa's doing an amazing job tonight, letting everybody know to hit the like button. Oh God, well, God. <laughs> She's only happy because I'll be in the hall of Georgia. That is one of our moderators. You put her in charge. <laughs> she's she's on the board. Oh, you got God. Melissa. You got Cheryl. Oh, I don't see our guy Trevor NCIS Fanatic Twenty One. Those are the four big moderators right now. 
You put Ohio State, two Ohio State people and an Alabama person. Uh, and then the other one would be Trevor. I don't know who he roots for. Probably not FSU. Hey, they're people that wanted to be moderators. What was this? The the, the refs cheated I want UNC. Is this Dennis? This is a Miami guy. So he, I know he's saying some silly thing. What is this? The refs cheated on North Carolina because the the though was holding on that last drive. I, that, Jason, can you understand what really I just said? I don't really understand what I just said. I mean, yes, the, the, it was holding on that one. But if we're willing to really go back to that game, I did watch the replay of that game. Oh, you want to talk about holding? You want to talk about holding that whole entire game? The, the, that second half was a, oh, crap, North Carolina's top five. You got to keep them in the top five. You got to keep them in the top five. Oh, no, wait, personal, no, personal foul. If that's you. Listen, and, and Florida State used to get the benefit of those calls back in the day, during the dynasty era. So so I'm, I'm not going to look a gift horse in the mouth. Florida State was in that position before. North Carolina was one of the top teams in the ACC entering last week. So so I get why it happened that way. But if you want to sit here and talk about one call for Florida State, I can give you about five different calls that were both oh, that went in North Carolina's direction. Terrible. So let's, let's calm down that one, Ace. J-Rob's getting hold. I think a DB was getting – was it Asante coming off, I think, off of a blitz that he was running off the side, and he was held like a mother. I mean, it was unbelievable to me. It probably would have been two more sacks, honestly. It would have been six sacks in that game. More importantly, not a hard time to eat myself. Uh, 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 you want to talk about the punches? This is from Luke. You want to talk about the punches being thrown in front of a ref with no flag? That's not our fault. I, I, don't, I, don't, I don't know if that's our fault. That, I don't know. That's the ACC refs. You should be used to it. You're in the ACC with us, too. You go down the ship with us. The only thing worse – then Miami fans who actually act and talk about when Miami was good are fans of a program that have no history. Well, this is also Luke. This is from Luke Walker mainly right now. North, North, Carolina, North Carolina's greatest player was who? Lawrence Taylor? Or yeah, he's pretty high standard. Right, but he was a hard brass here. But, but North Carolina was <laughs> in the top five team twice, and both times they lost to Florida State. We'll see. Yeah. Basketball season's coming up. Well, oh no, y'all are awful in basketball. Yeah. Sorry, oh. <laughs> Leonard Hamilton's your daddy. Don't worry, the ceiling's the roof. <laughs> Leonard Hamilton is your daddy. This sounds delicious. Oh yeah, this is what we do on Florida State Seminoles Live. I just I uh, run the live chat, and these two go at it, and uh, it's a good time. Oh, it's beautiful. It was better on Tuesday nights, but okay. Fine. Let's talk. There are other priorities on Tuesday night. What? So he can go play drunk softball with, with his work friends? I, I don't want to get fired. I want to be there. There's a few of my bosses there that I need to be on a good side with, and I will always you continue know, to do that. You legally cannot get fired for not playing softball. There's there's actual laws against that. Just let, give me a Dennis, heads up. Dennis says, Logan will take a win any way he can get it. Uh Sure, I'll take a top five win. Oh man, that's hard. I should. Oh, there's only dang it. There's only two columns: win and loss. Yeah. <sighs> yeah. I God forbid. The I take it. Thing is, is that it's not a good look to be up thirty-one-seven and almost blow it. But what I like about the win in the end was that North Carolina it wasn't one of those deals where the clock ran out and it's still a legitimate win, regardless. But to make a defensive, they had the ball. What about the fifty? With about forty-five, fifty seconds left. No. So it took a legitimate defensive stand to win the game. Absolutely. I like Florida, that. Florida State, we, we've said this before. We said this earlier. And we, you know, we talked about this, and, and James and I talked a little bit about this on Sunday. Florida State has shown the growth that you want to see. Florida State has shown much, much more improvement. The Florida State team this week was much better than the team against Notre Dame, was much better against the team than Jacksonville State. And on the offensive line, too. I like the growth, and the offensive line still sucks like they did against Georgia Tech. But we – I'm concerned about the height factor. I'm concerned about right now that we are – everyone's all of a sudden like, oh, Florida State, is Florida State back? Is Florida State back? No, Florida State's not back. Florida State is 2-3 and three at the halfway point of the season. Florida State, if they win, will be a 500 ball club. This is not the Florida State team I grew up with. This is not even the Florida State team – when I was in school there during the lost decade, Florida State 
I need Florida State to have a solid second half. In a, in a perfect world, Florida State wins four out of their last five games and finishes seven and four. That's a perfect world. Are you sure is the O line handling gotten better? Yes, Robert Davis. I'm 150 percent serious. The offensive line was making the same silly, stupid, part of my language, Mark, stupid ass mistakes against North Carolina that they were making against Georgia Tech. It's what getting more? better. There what? is progression, most certainly. Of course, you and White Mike can get there and say the ceiling is the roof. That's fine. I'm watching the. I'm watching game though. This has nothing to do with white, no. black, no. Native American. The the the, 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 the all, offensive what? line is progressing. Well, First Very all, nicely, and I like it. First of all, White White Mike is from The Wire, one of the greatest shows ever. You weren't even bored yet when that show. Was I out. fell asleep in the first episode. Couldn't get into it. I'd rather watch. I'd rather watch you say Game Bird of Thrones Bird. times like five thousand to that. Breaking Bad any day of the week. Game of Thrones, I watched eight minutes of it and turned it off because it's bogus. Was it's it too bogus. many girls on there? Too many it's girls? Crap. Well, uh, yeah, in in Brennan, I guess you look like that. Incest? <sighs> is, that, is, that, is that a panhandle thing? It's not my rule. That's how they did it back in the day. I'm just enjoying the storyline, the fairy tale. <laughs> this, this thing's getting off the rails here, real quick. So, okay. Yeah, we've got a BYU fan in here. Welcome hey. to the show. Shout out to the, the, the Latter day Saints. I like that. Shout out to BYU. They or might the Latter day Saints, out. possibly. They might, they might actually make hey, it. Hey, Mark, get this uh, get this Alexander dude in here. He's like coming after Cheryl. He's just being a total, uh oh, you know what? He just here. came out of nowhere. He's some, see, see. I can't really say it on here. I, I can't, I only have like four cuss words I can say a month. You've right? you said two today. I don't even think I've said, I've said so two. Go ahead. So go hell. ahead. No, no, you said you have a third curse word. Go for it. Oh, no. Alexander's just being a complete dickhead. So we just got to get it. There we go. Out. He's in time out good. He was just a troll. He can't be coming after our moderators like that. Uh, can't do it. So Logan, 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 give me your give me your keys to victory to beating Louisville. The keys to victory are going to be once again. I want to see defensive lines show up. Make sure for uh, Louisville's offense can't work. If they can do that, I mean, I, I think that's the main thing for this game. But also number two, mental game. Mental game has got to be huge. I don't want to see you. You just had a big win, and like Mike Norvell said. I don't want to see my team go out there and lay an egg. I, I don't want to be like all giddy giddy, you know, woohoo. And then when you go out there and play against a non-ranked team, not show up and play hard like you did against North Carolina. You show up, you play hard, you uh, finish plays, you have that same kind of energy like you did on prime time last weekend. That's how you win this game. And the number three uh, is just going to continue to be, I think, Jordan Travis, if he can stay healthy through this game, if he can be able to sustain drives and keep going, burn up that clock and uh, give the defense a little break, then we'll be good to go. But I think Jordan Travis uh, is destined. You know, he did leave Louisville. I think he's destined. He's not going to say anything, but I do think he's going to want to put on a show in Kentucky, and I'm all here for it. So I've got a question for both of you uh, because of Dennis Wilson's comment here. Um, Almost only counts in horseshoes and hangers. Uh, Jason Logan, how uh, do you get spotted 30 points and still almost lose the game? So I got a question for you two. Uh, did they actually start the game and the scoreboard said 30 to nothing Florida State? That's what happens when you get spotted 30 it, points. It, it was a malfunction. And yeah, so it was automatically started. The, actually, they started the game in the second half. I don't know how you I don't know how you scored a point, but anyway, you were spotted 30. <laughs> Logan. Not Logan, I'm sorry. Mark Rogers, TV, the Wisconsin College Football. Dennis Wilson's a moron. We've realized this for two years. <laughs> Dennis Wilson is an idiot. Dennis Wilson is a Miami fan who has what looks like Mims, high, Mims Middle School as his, as his icon emoji there or whatever. And then on top of that, if you were in fact considering that to be spotted 30 right. points, it was 31 to 7, so... You must have spotted them seven, or I don't know how that works. It's a 24 point difference. Once again, let's stop trying to rationalize with Dennis Wilson. He's an idiot. <laughs> to follow along with my question, I think Logan hit the nail on the head. I think Florida State needs to play not like they did. Look, the Florida State needs to play up to expectations. Florida State is supposed to go in there, and yes, I get the Vegas says we're an underdog. Florida State should go in there. It win comfortably. If Florida State plays on talent alone, our talent versus their talent, I know Tutu Atwell is from Miami. I know they got a lot of guys from Florida. If we go on talent alone, we should go up there and play them. Yes, Matt, W, they're the greatest team ever. 
Florida State should go up there and beat Louisville. And I think the, the key of the game is Jordan Travis. I think I think Logan hit the nail on the head. Jordan Travis wants this game. It was one thing the Florida State beat Louisville last year. He didn't play in that game. He wants this game. He wants to go up there to the school he started playing college football at, and he wants this W. And I think Florida State is going to rally around him. We'll do our predictions in a moment. But I, I think Florida State, I think this is going to be the most important game. Because this is the game, Florida State, if they can go to the bye week five and five, I'm going to have a hell of a lot more confidence that we can win three out of our final five games. Mm-hmm. I'm going to remind everyone that we're here every Wednesday night. So you got to stay with us, people. This this uh, keeps everybody on their toes, that you're with us every week. You're paying attention. Yeah. Wednesday night at 6 o'clock Eastern time. Until so that's our new time. Until Logan's intramural bowling schedule starts. and then we have Jason's to so to- triggered. Jason's so triggered. <laughs> what are you doing on Wednesday nights? It's more the fact you're that doing this. Some of, some of us have to wake up early for work, and I'm figuring that we're we, we doing this an hour earlier than usual. We're, we're having to adjust our daily schedules. Are you on Dennis so, Wilson's okay. drug? Are you on whatever he's on? So yes, we're play, spotting Jason an hour, you can go and play he doesn't get it. Softball at Tom Brown Park or wherever the hell you're going to play. <laughs> Don't tell them where I'm at. God, I got a few. I got Luke Walker and Dennis Wilson after me. And then you're play so the other thing I remind everyone of is that we're at the highest view count, of course, at the end. We hit 90 or 91. So what you need to do is you wait for the video to post because you missed most of it. So you go back and you watch the video uh, once it posts. Yes. And hit that like button whenever you watch it. Like right now, if you're watching the VOD or right now, hit right, the Logan. like button. Logan, prediction time. Now, I have... I've won the last three. I took Jacksonville State and the points because I didn't think there was any way in hell we were going to beat them by 21. Or excuse me, we 31, however the hell much we beat them by. I took Florida State and the points against Notre Dame. I won that. I'm the only one with the stones to pick Florida State against North Carolina. Oh, so, stones. Logan, Logan, stones. I said stones. Give us your prediction, and I will give you the correct prediction. Go ahead. Oh, is that right? Yeah. Uh, I'm going Florida State in this game, most certainly. Uh, and I think the way this culture is changing under Norvell is really I – think, I think it's looking bright. If if I see them competing and not having that mindset that they were going through and thinking about, oh, we just beat a number five team in the country, we should be able to just kind of lack around and beat this – uh, team that hasn't really won more than one game this season. We're going to be all right. No, Louisville is going to come out pissed. They already should be mad about stealing commitments and all this kind of stuff. So uh, they got they got to be ready for this game. Maybe even more than North Carolina game. They just mm-hmm. they, they Florida State practically. I know the the betting odds are you know favors Louisville, but this should this would be an upset in my favor if it were uh, Louisville were to win this game. So I need Florida State to pull it off. I need Jordan Travis to do his thing, have fun while he's doing it, while he's over there. I'm going Florida State. I'm going Florida State 34, Louisville 21. Now, is that 34 including two field goals or a missed extra point? Uh, uh, I'm going to go field goals. Fitzgerald yeah. bounces back. He, he bounces back. I think maybe he had his girl there. Maybe there's like a few girls at the stands that maybe he you know he got a little nervous and was thinking about her too much. But you know, you gotta we gotta wait till later to text her, man. And then you know, definitely when you win a game like that, you're gonna have a great night. Hey, we don't all fold under pressure around the ladies like you do, Logan. All right. So <laughs> look at Luke Walker. Luke Walker's already on to NC State. That's that's the best comeback. We're on to NC State. Okay. Good job. The, the ceiling is the roof, there, buddy. So. I agree with you. I think that Louisville is not a one and fourteen. Yes, that's their record. They have played much better than a one and fourteen. They are fully capable of beating Florida State. Florida State has to go in there and play with that fear that that if they play like they did against Georgia Tech, Louisville is going to kick our butt. But if they go in there and play like we did last week and play a full sixty minutes, then I think we'll be fine. I'm going to sit here and say Florida State. What did you say, 34 what? No, oh, no, no. You tell me what yours is. Don't, no. All right, I'm going to say Florida State, 38, mm. Louisville, 24. Jesus. As you drop stuff. I'm going to say 38, 24, Florida State. This cat. Uh, 34, 28? 34, 30, no, no, excuse me, 38, 24. 38, 38 24, okay. 
This made me curious about how I was doing in Florida State games. So I took Georgia Tech plus the 13, so that's 1-0. and I took Miami minus the 14, so that's 2-0. and I took Notre Dame minus the 21, so I missed that one uh, with that damn goal line stand at the end of the game, unfortunately. And then we had uh, I took uh, Florida State plus the 13, so I'm 3-1 and one thus far against the spread on the Florida State game. What about so, Jacksonville State? Didn't touch that Jacksonville State game. It doesn't doesn't reach the uh, Mark Rogers TV, the voice of college football standards for a prediction. Logan and I don't reach the standards, and we're still here. <laughs> what happened? What? You, you hit certain standards, basically. Uh, You're available on Wednesday nights. Until, yeah, you go. until next week, when all of a sudden we're randomly on Mondays at 4 p.m. or something. Well, uh, no, no. The, the unfortunate thing about this is Logan has basically found out how much power he wields on this show. I know. We just, Jump right to it and switch the time. Always got to be ready to change, Jason. You've got to be able to go with the flow. Wednesdays are beautiful because we get an extra day of updates from Mike Norvell, your favorite coach. That's nice. And we're just a few, we're just one less day closer to game day, which we can all be excited about. I will say, I do like Mike Norvell more than Jimbo Fisher because Mike Norvell looks more like a rapper from the early 2000s slash late 90s. No, oh, yeah. Well, sh- uh, shout out to the kid that's also getting a tattoo of that picture of him. Of Is that uh, what's happening? Oh, he's definitely getting that tattoo. Yeah. If nothing more, I'm rooting for Mike Norvell just to see what Jason will say once it hits him that Mike Norvell is successful. I'm, I want Mike Norvell to be successful. But what I'm saying is that one win against North Carolina cannot take away the bad parts of the season. Sure. So Absolutely. And, and, and the people like Logan, who want to automatically rename Tallahassee Norvellville, because <laughs> one game. Who said stop. that? Who said that? I said that there's just optimism most certainly happening. There's progression everywhere, including the offensive line. And that's really, you know, if the offensive line is progressing, then shoot, extend Mike Norvell right now. I mean, that. I mean, that's impressive enough for me. You done? <laughs> Yeah. All right, no, everyone, that about wraps it up for a big Wednesday night. Of course, Wednesday night's your night for Florida State football talk here every Wednesday night at 6 o'clock Eastern time. That's there our coach, ladies and gentlemen, Mike Norvell. There he is. That, that, that was a few days ago. It was 2001. Let's calm down. It's, it's, it reminds <laughs> me when I had Corn Rose in 2001. Oh, you guys need to check out uh, – Noel game day. Check out Noel game day with uh, Logan and the rest of the the staff there. And uh, what's the podcast you guys? Have it's going? called it's called Hear the Spear, and we we're going live. I guess I can see now th- uh, tomorrow night at nine p.m. We'll do um, just our preview of Louisville. Look back at a little bit of North Carolina, but you can also jump in our Discord, which Jason loves the most. You can jump in there and chat with. Uh, over a thousand FSU fans daily. I think it's the most active Florida State community, honestly. But love it in there. Come join us. Come join us. It's for free too. So come join our Discord. You know what? You know what? You, you normally said it about ten times a show, and you've only said it twice. So you have eight more times to say it. So just go ahead, get it out of the way. No, that's it. I want. I got to make- say, Jason hit the nail on the head with that comment. Definitely, <laughs> absolutely, he did. I'm gonna have to look at the- <laughs> <laughs> I never said that. I said it to be a smart ass, but what I was the counter. I think it was four tonight, Mark. Four. Yeah, was it four? smart ass yeah. because you put it in our Twitter conversation. <laughs> four. I think it was four. On a serious note, hey, hey, before we go, on a serious note, condolences go out to Mario Henderson, former Florida State offensive lineman who died today at the age of 35. Mm-hmm. Played at three for four seasons, started in 2006 before going on to the Raiders. I believe it was the Chargers, the NFL. So respect, condolences to his family. Oh, sweet. Look, look at that, Jason. Got some fire edits. I appreciate that, Fruity Baboon. Now, is that your brother or your mother who's doing the... That's actually me. Am I right? You don't know what's going on in my right hand over here, but I'm over here just... Whoa, whoa. You know, I'm just sending it in over here. Whoa. You're <laughs> family-oriented here, okay? Uh, what, what am I going to pull up on my phone? Keep, no, 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 no. Keep it family-oriented, okay? <laughs> what the fuck going to bring on there? I would oh, like my. to invite everyone to our SEC Live Coming up here at 8 o'clock Eastern time. Yes, Jason, you're invited as well. Jump on here. Join in. It's a fun time. All sorts of guests coming through talking SEC football. Yeah. Will, will Florida play another game this season? That's the valid question. 
hit that like button too. We have 90 people watching. Let's hit that like button. That's what we're doing at the end of it. Hit the like button so then more FSU fans will see these lives. We need more FSU fans in here. We got too much Luke Walker. We got too much. <laughs> we got too much Dennis Wilson. Can we get some more Knowles in here? I would really appreciate it. But this, shout out to-, uh, to Logan's point. This is what I'm looking at right this second. Clemson fan, Ohio State, North Carolina, Georgia, uh, Alabama. And a bunch of others that were in here at some point. So just the last minute, those are the those are the comments coming from college football fans. The FSU fans are still on Tuesday. Nah, well, we'll get them here. 90, 90 will do it. We just got to get some more Knowles in here. We hit that like button. If we smash the living crap out of that like button, we'll have 200 people in here watching. The Miami ones get like 200, 300 people watching. We're over here struggling. We just beat a number oh. four. They just beat a number five team in the country. So bro, I did a Miami back. live stream after their game on Saturday. I had like 260 in there. Bro, the U is back, guys. Didn't you get that message? The U is back. They beat Pitt 31 19. The U is back. <laughs> oh, <laughs> they're back. Fred chimes in. Gator fan. A couple no. Gator fans, too. At least two, maybe three or four. Though well, their season's over, so they're done. They have tennis coming up, though, because I would say basketball, but Mike White is still there. Uh, but tennis season is coming up, I believe, for for Florida or swimming and diving. Okay. I don't know. It's always maybe. a sense of pride right there. Maybe sense of pride, pride, the tennis yeah. program. If Bowen's wife would stop kissing the players, they could actually you know, play games. Yeah, yeah, they're done. We won't be seeing them for long. Well, it was good while it lasted. Yeah. I'll take their tight end, though. I'll take their tight end in Pittsburgh. I'll take it. This is true. Luke Walker, (laughs) shout out to Luke Walker. This is bogus because you have multiple streams for the sorry community college. There is sometimes a demand for that. (laughs) Because they don't have jobs. They can't actually work. They have plenty of free time to sit here and talk about how the U is back. When they raise my Miami channel revenue about four or five times in a month, and I got to pour my resources into it. So there you go. All right. Bro. Wait, so Logan Robinson, Noel Game Day, Jason Parker, NBC Six, <sighs> Edition Seventy Six in the books. See you next Wednesday at six Eastern Time. Six, baby. Wednesday, baby. Six. Oh.